Hello young learner teachers! A library of picture books is one of those luxuries that I have very rarely had access to in the 20 years I've been teaching English to children. The good news is that since 2020 we've seen this huge increase in the number of high quality digital libraries available. That's why for so many young learner teachers and schools it makes perfect financial and pedagogical sense to subscribe to an app that offers animated stories for you and your students to read online. However, be careful. Just like any digital tool, it's really important to be mindful of how you integrate them into your lessons. Here are a couple of mistakes that you can avoid when using animated songs and stories with your young learners. Never use a story that you haven't looked at in detail before. I know it can be tempting. You see the cover and the title and you think, oh, that'll work. <laughs> well, let me tell you a little secret. All skilled storytellers know that you need to become familiar with the book yourself before attempting to use it with your learners. Here are some things you need to ask yourself. First of all, is the content interesting for my group? Is the language level appropriate? And how will I encourage them to participate? You should also practice reading it aloud a few times to build confidence with your pronunciation and get a feel for the rhythm and speed of the story. If you don't do this before reading it with your students, you really do run the risk of the activity being a failure. Don't always rely on the audio that comes with these animated stories. Learn to read it aloud yourself. The second tip is don't sit your students in a circle for story time. 84% of my community have said that they're seeding children in a circle to listen to a story. No, don't do this. And I know this sounds very traditional of me to say, but I do like putting them in rows and I suggest you do the same. Here's why. Now, I love circle time, but think about this. A circle is a communicative seating arrangement. It encourages interaction, conversation. It's perfect for introducing vocabulary and discussions, but that's what makes it wrong for storytelling. If you want children to understand a story in a foreign language, you need to make sure that everyone can see you and the visuals clearly. Whether you're using a tablet or you're projecting the story on the screen, if a child can't see those images, they're going to miss out on all the essential language support that they need to understand. So, sit them in rows. That brings me actually to my next point. Don't only use the app to tell the story. The animated stories that you find on apps such as Book a Class app provide the perfect hook to get students interested in the story and the visual support that they need to understand the text. By all means, use this resource over and over, but take the story off the screen as well. Once the children are familiar with the language and concepts in the story, try telling it in other ways. Act out the story with puppets or costumes or props. Use story sequencing cards or story stones or have them recreate the story with their own text and drawings. There are many ways you can use the app as a jump off point to extend their language learning, critical thinking and creativity. Don't forget to include the online stories as part of your homeschool link strategy. We all know how important it is to involve families in the language learning process, but finding ways for parents and caregivers to get involved has always been challenging for teachers. Am I right? Animated stories are a wonderful tool that make learning at home fun and easy. A good platform has parental access that can be configured by the teacher to include specific books that the children have been enjoying at school. If you're only using these tools in the classroom, you're not taking advantage of all they have to offer. Now the animated story is not separate from the lesson. One of the biggest mistakes I've seen teachers make when using animated stories and other digital tools, to be honest, is to just read a story to the learners and then move on to another unconnected activity. This is not how you make the most of this resource at all. When using stories in a digital library, you should think of them as one piece in a much bigger puzzle. An effective story-based lesson has specific stages and activities to help support and extend the learner's understanding of the language and the concepts. Here's an example of how you might structure a lesson. Start by introducing key language and concepts. Do a pre-reading routine, a while-reading strategy and a post-reading activities. 
I've actually written a blog post on how you can plan story-based lessons. It's over on my website. I'll link you to it below. Now, if you don't have a digital library yet, I suggest that you check out Book a Class app. It's the one that I've been using. I'll link you to a free trial in the comments.